Welcome everybody. This is Frank Dana De Lorenzo with another edition of Quick Launch Live. Sorry we started a minute late. I had an issue with the uh, the platform. You know, technology doesn't always play nice. So I had to quickly create a uh, another event and, and launch. So hopefully you can hear me. You're out there. If you are out there in LinkedIn land, uh, please put a comment, put any questions in there that you may have. But let us know where you're watching from uh, if you are able to to view this. And again, my apologies for uh, the technical hiccup. But keep in mind, these are 15 minute bite sized increments about your data, about being data driven, meant to provide some education, some awareness, some tips and tricks on how to become better uh, at managing your data and how to become data driven. And so <clears throat> today, I wanted to uh, take a different approach and share just some of the good data driven stats. Good morning, Jill. Thanks for being here. Uh, that we see out there primarily from CFOs of mid to large companies. So I want to share those, share a few um, success stories on, on folks, CFOs that have reported uh, their wins from becoming data driven and what that means. Uh, morning, Houston, Texas. Love to have you with us. All right. Excellent. And I'm glad you all could see me because we had a, a, a hiccup right at go time. So I'm glad that this is working. All right. So remember, put questions in the chat. If you're watching live, we'd love to know where you're watching from. All these recordings are on our um, Preferred Strategies LinkedIn company page. You can view them anytime. If you view one after the fact, just let us know you're there. We'd love to know the content's being consumed and viewed, hopefully adding value. Most importantly, if you have any questions about being data-driven, uh, how you can better get your arms around your data, uh, morning from Austin, Chase. Great to have you with us. Uh, any questions at all, we have 27 people that are just so passionate about your data. Reach out. We're happy to help at Preferred Strategy. So thank you. All right. So without further ado, I wanted to walk through some, some stats that I was able to pull together with you today. So let's see if I can pull this up. Uh, hopefully you can see my screen. So what does it mean? What are some of the stats we see? And this was CFOs reporting this. What were some of the key findings? Well, 76% of FP&A roles require advanced Excel skills. I won't read all these, and you can read them, but I want to point out some of the storyline behind these, uh, these, these stats, in that Excel is here to stay and highly used. And in fact, a manual data process slows finance departments down uh, because the manual effort primarily around Excel, 41% of FP&A function work is done manually. Function is responsible for consolidation of data for core reports like our budgets, P&Ls, balance sheet, and of course, our month end reporting. Translates to about 10 hours each week of your skilled CFM financial talent spending time on manual work. So obviously, there's hopefully got to be a better way. And more people means it exasperates the problem. So unsurprisingly, uh, the more people are involved, uh, the, the bigger the problem is magnified. On average, 17 people are involved in budget, rising to 23 people, companies of 500 or more. I thought that was interesting. But for 78% of companies, the budget process takes between one to three months to complete, while 92% of CFOs are frustrated with said process. So I see that as a huge opportunity uh, for us in the field and us uh, that provide technology solutions to make an impact. What else are they sharing? Well, Excel rules supreme, as I mentioned. 70% of companies are using Excel for their budgeting and forecasting. Despite the dominance of Excel, though, only 18% consider themselves Excel experts. And three reasons CFOs cited. Time and knowledge invested in Excel models makes it really hard to ditch. Excel's flexibility is unrivaled. I agree with both those points. And finally, the implementation costs of a potential third-party solution to bring something uh, more substantial to the table uh, might you know, be a barrier to entry for some companies. I think that one's debatable, but that's a company by company choice. CFOs suffer the most manual role in the entire C-suite. 81% of CFOs believe they suffer from the most intensive manual work in comparison to anybody else. And 48% said it reduces their time with family and, you know, the work-life balance, I would suggest. 47% recognize the situation reduces their ability to be strategic is what I would summarize. Strategic decision-making, they're dissatisfied with their output as CFOs. 31% uh, admit constant spreadsheet jockeying leaves them bored. And let's not forget, when I read, read between these bullets, if my data is being thrown around in Excel manually, 
how do I trust in the data? So you've got some, you know, bored and maybe less efficient CFOs as reporting here. Uh, but in addition, you probably have an increased risk of some poor decision making based on uh, inaccurate data. How would CFOs become more strategic if they reduce that manual workload? Well, 52% report they'd spend more time fulfilling the role as a strategic business partner for their companies. And 44% said they'd spend more time on analysis and free them up for real-time reporting. You can see the stats. It improves their work-life balance. It's never a bad thing, folks, right? I mean, that's healthy for everybody to get the most out of our team. Uh, some other big data stats, I won't read them all because, and by the way, folks, if anybody out there is interested in these slides or would like them, just reach out to me. Let me know. I'm happy to send these on over if there's any stats that kind of raise your curiosity or you want to look further. But I highlighted one here. 95% of businesses cite the need to manage their unstructured data as a problem for their business. And if you take a step back and think about it, I've been in the ERP space uh, since the mid 80s. And uh, we, we can all agree on, I believe, is systems have gotten larger, more robust, more point solutions. What does that mean? More and more data is being collected. And that's a good thing. But now we're at a stage generally across the industry as a whole. How do we get our arms around that data for something meaningful? So and gain, gain some valuable insights. How do we use all that data? And that's the essence of becoming data driven. So when it comes to becoming data driven, I always like to point this out. You do have a choice. You can build. What I mean by that is you can build your own data model versus the other option is buy an existing data model. Now, the truth is you may not always have that choice. If you look at whatever ERP you're using, Dynamics, SAP, you want to do, I think, some investigation into options. Are there data models, in this case for Power BI most likely, pre-built for your particular solution? If not, then build becomes maybe your only answer. Um, but if so, so for example, what we do at Preferred Strategies, we've got data model built for JD Edwards, ready to go, Viewpoint Vista, ready to go, and also NetSuite. So those are already pre-built. And that means instead of taking a couple of years or a year maybe to, uh, to get a model that's effective for you, you have it up and running in weeks. And I think of two examples, I had two clients that shared this recently. One took about 12 months, one took about 18 months. They happened to be in the construction space. Now, they decided to build a model. So after about 12 months, one of them uh, mentioned or showed us that they were able to build a job cost model and they were getting some good reporting. But that was it. It was not across the enterprise. It did not include GL, APAR, you know, all the financial um, suite of applications. And so they waved the white flag. And when they looked at what they were investing in building, buying was a choice. We happen to have a solution in that case. But you should always consider that, I think. Do we build? And build is hard. I didn't pull the stats for this. I should have. Uh, but the stats of uh, first round projects where people build their own, the failure rate is, I believe, in the 80 percentile. But don't quote me. I'd want to get that right. And just as a refresher, just as a quick mention, because I think I got a few minutes to do this. When you uh, either build or if you buy a data model, um, and you can make it your own. What I mean by that, it's got to be configurable to your, your account hierarchies, your GL structure, and so forth. But once you get there, creating some beautiful content, that this is something I can create, and I'm not the most technical person in the room. I, I think with all my years in the industry, I understand the business side well, and I know what data points I'd like to report on, but I'm not great at programming and coding. And so it you know can limit report writing skills based on the, the untransformed data. But here's one where I was able to pull some sales KPIs, but all the way KPIs across all my departments through my procurement and inventory. And then some other fun things, you can have tutorials or training videos, there's a YouTube video embedded, some other KPIs. And I go on and on, income statement, net income, gross profit. So I did some of these just as an example. But let's circle back for a moment, folks. What did CFOs report? Show of hands if I can see it. Uh, the, the the tool that reigns supreme in their financial reporting. Anybody remember? If you remember, put it in the uh, comments for me. Otherwise, I'll just spit it out here in a minute. But uh, that tool would be, of course, Microsoft Excel. And if we are using Excel, that's fine. Excel is a great tool. But if you're truly data driven, you can now trust in the data and create your Excel content from a well-governed data model. So that means when I'm pulling data from here, I can trust the source of data. 
Uh, Excel, LinkedIn user, correct, hand raised, I love it, thank you. Um, and so you can build some nice Excel spreadsheets, but have the data pull from your trusted data source, your company data model, your library of, of information, if you will. And one other small thing with Excel, you can leverage things like the cube value functions within Excel. So instead of a spreadsheet being, you know, 10 megabytes with a lot of your valuable data just being sent off as a silo, you can have Excel do what it does best. Like we mentioned CFO said earlier, um, unrivaled and flexibility in reporting, what if scenarios, but it's just pulling the data from your bank, your library. So this spreadsheet becomes kilobytes, not megabytes. And I can't so easily just send all my data off to wherever. So very good tool with Excel. And then finally, what are CFOs saying after successfully implementing a solution? So I just pulled a few actual scenarios I knew. I won't read them all to you, but I think this really does resonate. A 23 times improved productivity in AR disputes that used to take four hours, now five minutes. Fantastic. Four million uh, in our rail costs uh, for one of our, I believe it was one of our manufacturers. And then the one I was uh, personally involved with a bit, reduction in waste, eight to $10 million profit per year by using some of the machine learning, interesting, in Power BI to reduce waste from eight to 4%. Uh, that's real value. That's real measurable, moves the Delta kind of numbers. And then a process engineering efficiency. When I see 359 times improved productivity, it's almost hard to believe, but that's the impressive stats, three to four hours to gather data. It's now pulled in 30 seconds because they're automating that, that data process. And then just a few others I thought were helpful. Three-year head start. This one I pulled because it speaks to the build versus buy. Again, if that choice is available to you. And then a few other eye-opening uh, BI stats I thought were, were meaningful. Bottom line is 85% of business leaders agree, big data, getting your arms around your data, data analytics will significantly change the way that you do business. So, uh, and then finally, organizations, I just like this one, I had to throw it in there, uh, that are data-driven or have a data-driven culture, value their data, 23 times more likely or more successful in acquiring new customers, six times more likely to retain them, 19 times more likely to be profitable. That's from the McKinsey uh, Global Institute. And then just one other reminder, with Power BI and Excel, you've got three reporting options, visualization and Power BI, really good formatted pixel perfect reports like financials with paginated, and then of course spreadsheets, which we talked about. So that is it for my display today. Uh, folks, I will not be with you next week because I will be taking a long overdue a uh, vacation, a family cruise, if you will. So uh, we'll not be with you next week, but coming back the following Thursday, we will be uh, back in Quick Launch Live and ready to go. But for now, I am going to get ready. Oh, where did it go? This didn't go as planned. Hang on, folks. Get ready to head to... my vacation. So to all of you out there, thank you for joining us on this quick launch live today. We're all about your data preferred strategies. Hey, Ben, thanks for joining. If we can help with anything at all, please reach out. I'll be on the beach next week, but back raring to go the week after. Enjoy your week, everybody. And thanks for watching today. Have a great and blessed Thursday. Thank you.